Right. So that's it. that's the gut microbiome, which which I, I think is like the main one, right? But you also think about the skin and, and the, the mouth and other areas where we have weaknesses, I guess. Definitely. So uh, although, yeah, so actually most of science right now is completely focused on the gut microbiome's impact on all of the other tissues and organs. But yeah, as I mentioned in the book, uh, you know, optimizing the skin microbiome, most people don't think about their skin uh, um, in terms of whether it's optimizing the microbiome on the skin or even things as simple as skin pH to optimize, you know, skin barrier function, because it's not just gut barrier function, it's also skin barrier function that can let microbes into our system that then increases the burden that our immune system has to fight them off essentially. So uh, yeah, I've got info in the book about uh, optimizing skin pH. And, you know, it was, it was amazing to me because when I started researching, you know, uh, I mean, I'm not a skin physiologist, but so when I started researching about skin health during aging uh, and seeing that, you know, soaps, this, the pH of soap is eight, about eight, seven to eight. Uh, and, you know, even though the, the pH of water is, you know, seven or so, right? Um, the pH of skin is five. Now, to, to, to most, uh, you know, a difference between five and seven or eight may not seem like much, but that's on a log scale, which means that a pH of five, which is three units away from eight, is 10 to the third. So a thousand times, the pH of skin is a thousand times more acidic than soap, than most commonly, you know, uh, uh, available soap. So if you're not thinking about soap at all, you're usually, you're probably using something that's bad for your skin pH, that's going to temporarily raise your skin pH and rate increases in skin pH are shown, are found during aging. Older adults have an increase in skin pH. And in association with that, they have decreased skin barrier function. So uh, as one strategy to optimize skin barrier function and optimize the skin microbiome, you know, I've got information in the book about, uh, you know, looking for uh, skin cleansers that have a pH closer to closer to physiological pH. Uh, and yeah, and then I've got also info in the book on, um, but I should say too, along the skin microbiome uh, component, that's still basically an emerging field. Uh, you know, there are so many sites in the human body in terms of skin you know, the forehead skin is going to be different, has a different microbiome than the palms of your hands or the, or the, uh, you know, the soles of your feet or armpits, you know, so these each have slightly different pHs. So uh, the microbiome composition in each of those areas may be different. So even optimizing skin microbiome is a different story, but in terms of skin uh, pH, that, that, that's relatively straightforward and how it changes during aging and optimizing it. Um, so uh, yeah, and then along the lines of oral health um, and the, the oral microbiome, you know, it's, it's been shown that, you know, periodontitis, so oral inflammation that leads to gum disease, um, the microbes present there in the gums of periodontitis patients can translocate into the blood. And some of those bacteria are found again in the atherosclerotic plaques, which it's either causative or it's contributing to the inflammatory cascade of atherosclerosis. So, um, when I wrote the book, I didn't know about these things and I wanted to educate, you know, and I wanted to uh, show people that microbes are playing more of a role than we all think. Um, and I've got little tricks to try to optimize each of these, uh, each of these areas. Now, interestingly, uh, to optimize, you know, I, I, so when you think about the ways that microbes can get in, I mean, obviously we eat food, you know, so they can get in through the gut, you know, the skin and the mouth. I was also working on, you know, respiratory, the respiratory system because breathing, right? So this was obviously pre-COVID and, it, you know, there just isn't much or wasn't much known in terms of how to op optimize, you know, the respiratory, respiratory immune system. So basically the immune cells that are lining our respiratory tract to potentially uh, protect us from respiratory pathogens. So, and since then, there's actually data showing that uh, eating a high soluble fiber diet increases these short chain fatty acids, which actually can improve respiratory uh, uh, immunity against uh, uh, pathogens like, you know, influenza virus. So whether or not, uh, you know, a high soluble fiber intake can protect against coronavirus and improve our immune systems enough to protect, that's unknown. There haven't been any studies, but um, yeah. So I've got lots of little tricks like that, you know, in the book um, based on, you know, it's an evidence-based approach to try to minimize the adverse effects of microbes on our existence. Right. Yes, and I would definitely want to talk about some of those. Um, so like, yes, where you, where the biggest bang bang for your buck is in terms of uh, reducing reducing the uh, the burden. But 
Uh, so the other thing is that a we get we get a the, the, this bigger burden because uh, I guess the the barriers get weaker. I mean, wherever they are, the barriers get weaker. But also the immune system kind of goes downhill, and it's almost like the microbes have a negative effect on the immune system. So it's it's like a a feed forward loop where it's it's reducing the immune system's ability to deal with them. Um, could you talk about that? A little bit. Yeah. So it, uh, as I say in the book, in exact quote, we are at constant war with microbes. It's a constant yin and yang of commensals and potential pathobionts. So most of the microbiome exists in symbiosis with us, but it's during things like aging and disease when that you know uh, becomes out of whack. And now, as you mentioned, you know microbes can start to negatively affect us, and it's a vicious cycle where. Um, you know, it, once you get started on that path, that, that path of microbes negatively affecting something that can just feed forward to itself. So, for example, there's a study uh, by uh, Don Bodish's group where they uh, actually used a, a model a, a, of inflammation. So TNF uh, alpha knockout mice to show basically what I just said, where, you know, uh, the cycle of, of microbes and inflammation triggers more microbial dysbiosis and more inflammation. So it's a vicious cycle. So yeah, as I show evidence in the book that you know microbes have evolved ways to adversely affect uh, our it, whether it's intestinal barrier function or it's uh, immune immune immunity you know so uh, or our immunity. But um, uh, just just as a quick example too, you know uh, um, there are are um, so microbes for example like viruses can produce. Um, uh, whether it's proteins or microRNAs that mimic human uh, versions of those things, which can trick our cells to make more of the viral components to aid in viral replication. So um, I think a huge part of further leaps in major leaps in, in extending aging is going to come as we identify these, these, these uh, tricks that microbes use uh, to try to trick our physiology to make more of themselves. And I'm very encouraged with that approach, you know, just seeing how in the past year, right? So uh, within, I think it was 60 days, Moderna, you know, the company Moderna got the, you know, uh, got the uh, genetic code for uh, SARS-CoV-2 and then came up with the, uh, you know, the, actually the genetic code for the spike protein and then made an RNA for that. So um, I think I say it in the book, but microbes days are numbered. It's only a matter of time. Before we've got complete, we've completely mapped the influence of microbes on human physiology, both positively and negatively. And once we've done that, then we can go after the ways in which they negatively affect us and, you know, either inhibit them directly with, you know, more targeted approaches as opposed to antibiotics, which basically wipe out all of the bacteria. Mm. Um, Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.